Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Um, welcome to our Going Through the Bible series, and we're going to be looking today at the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. We've got a Bible verse, Bible passage uh, to look at, Bible verses. It's Joshua, so open your Bibles. Um, uh, turn to Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. So that's the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. We read, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God bless you in this word. Stay in God's word. Stay in God's word. So here's a little bit of background. We're, um, we're now entering the, uh, the first book in the Old Testament of the so-called historical books. Um, the author is Joshua. Um, and it's written, written somewhere between the 3rd and the uh, 5th centuries BC. So quite a long time back. But... Um, the events of the book of Joshua span round about 25 years. So um, it starts soon after the death of Moses. Um, uh, uh, Joshua is Moses' successor. And we read that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. And so that's around 1406 BC before the conquest of Canaan begins, right? The promised land is to be, um, to be taken. So... The context here in this passage, which we just read, um, is that um, Joshua is called to lead the Israelites into uh, pagan territory, which is full of idolatry, you know, worshiping anything other else but Yahweh God, so the Canaanite country. And God is encouraging uh, Joshua here, uh, and us, of course, too, as we read this, as Israelite leader. Um, following the death of his his friend and, and and mentor and leader Moses right so the goal is to be loyal to Yahweh God and keep God's covenant so the stakes are very high here um, so the topic here is God's call for us to stay in God's uh, word for for Joshua to stay in God's word and which is identical it's the same call as uh, for us as Christians, as believers, followers of Jesus Christ today. All right, so when we look at some of these verses, um, it says in verse 7, be strong and very courageous, right? Be strong and very courageous. Uh, God is speaking directly into Joshua's heart and uh, helps him understand also to be careful and to obey all the instructions that Moses had given him, and then and only then uh, would he be successful in everything he does. So, in verse 8, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Uh, God bless me in this world. So, we have, we find here in these verses, um, obedience and faith are interconnected. And uh, verse 8, when it says um, book of instruction, that, of course, that refers to the Torah. Uh, Torah is just a Hebrew word or Hebrew way of saying the, um, the Lord's instructions, right? Not the Lord instructs, but the Lord's instructions. That's the Hebrew rendering of the word Torah. And in verse 9, we see um, how God is fully aware of the enormous challenge out of Joshua. It's just, uh, he, uh, um, it's overwhelming what Joshua is up against. 
and he's the new Hebrew uh, leader, the leader of the Israelites. So he has to uh, lead, uh, oh gosh, we don't know exactly how many people, but um, a whole group of people, um, probably around a million people or so, uh, into the uh, conquest, right? They, and they have to conquer the land, the Kenyan country, in a uh, holy war as a divine task that God commands them. So um, the, uh, the verse, uh, verse 9, when it says successful, um, that's basically uh, God's command um, to stay in the Bible, uh, that we follow him and he provides. So to stay in God's word, that's something we want to take to heart. And that's why we have the Bible and uh, to follow um, the, uh, the application of his word. All right. So, so what does it mean for you to stay in God's word? So it means... Um, we're able, as we are in God's Word, the Bible, on a daily basis, ideally, right? Less TV and, uh, you know, entertainment, it calls itself culture or whatever. But it's spend as much time as you can in the, in the Bible. And um, so then and only then will you be able to understand uh, God's will uh, for your life. Right? Jesus, Jesus tells us here in John 17, 17, um, Jesus says, Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. God bless you. I'll read that again. John chapter 17, verse 17. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. So that's one thing, right? One benefit. And another one is getting comfort from God as we stay in his word. Paul writes here in 2 Corinthians 1, uh, chapter 3 to 4. This is um, there's a man-made title. Basically, it says that God offers and provides comfort to all. All right? So, as we read here, uh, it reads, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God gave uh, has given us. God bless you know his word. So that's another benefit of staying in God's word, receiving God's comfort and passing it on to others, uh, whoever they may be, to comfort and strengthen them. And of course, uh, we want to also understand that we, you know, we want to have reverence for God our Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, and also uh, for his word, the Bible. Um, so in uh, Acts chapter 17, verses 30 to 31, we read. It's a big one. It's a big one. Acts chapter 17, 30 to 31. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him for he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead god bless reading of his word that is our lord jesus christ so we want to you know understand that on judgment day we will all be judged so um, we better turn to Jesus if we haven't already, uh, right? Uh, sooner than later, there's no second chance. And uh, that is the, um, <coughs> the, um, the writer of uh, Acts, which is it's, it's, um, Luke, the Gentile physician who wrote Acts, um, who also wrote the Gospel of Luke. So um, lastly, too, uh, one more benefit is, uh, as we obey God's word, is and to stay in God's word, the Bible, is to grow in our personal walk of faith and to stay close to Jesus, to our Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, um, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, we read, But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God bless the universe word. This is Jesus speaking back and defeating Satan the devil 
speaking God's word back to him. And um, it is so astonishing. I'll read it one more time. Uh, uh, another benefit of staying in God's word. Let's, let's read again. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God bless you in your word. So here we have our Lord Jesus encouraging us to stay in the Bible. And I, I pray and I, my prayer is in, for you to stay in God's word as much as you can, uh, ideally on a daily basis. Always remember, the best Bible is an open Bible. May God bless you and keep you.